What's going on guys, RBG here bringing you another trailer breakdown on Dragon Ball Game Project Z, which has officially been changed to Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. It's been 4 months since the previous trailer was revealed, and while we were excited, we weren't really sure what to make of it. All we knew was that the game was being developed by CyberConnect2, a studio best known for its work on the Dot .hack and Naruto Ultimate Ninja series, and that its gameplay would be delving into that action RPG genre. Unlike other DBZ games that have allowed us to experience fights from the core DBZ cast, this title will strictly revolve around Goku, making players experience the story through his eyes. There were other elements that we speculated would be in this title upon observation such as free roam, but that was about it. And that's until Microsoft's E3 conference delivered more information, so we're going to do a deep dive into this trailer with a breakdown analysis, but before we get into that, I want to remind you guys that this video is brought to you by Beautiful Halo. If you're a man or woman of culture who loves anime, games, and dank memes, then I highly recommend checking out their merch. They have a wide variety of stylish hoodies and other cool apparel that'll have your friends mad jealous. By using this promotional link, you get 5% off any $49 purchase or higher. So slide on over to BeautifulHalo.com. The link will be in the description. Now, there were a few things that I was apprehensive about when I heard that this title will essentially be retelling the events of the Z Saga. CyberConnect2 said, and I quote, that DBZ Kakarot would be an unforgettable adventure. But I wondered, how could it be unforgettable if we've seen the story unfold so many times in multiple game formats? There is also the issue of this being an anime-based game. While they look good from a service level perspective, they don't always deliver a hefty amount of content to keep us intrigued. And this is largely due to the fact that Namco Bandai is obligated to release a DBZ game on a yearly basis to maintain the game distribution rights. This means that the developers they hire don't necessarily have a decent amount of time needed to create projects that are loaded to the brim with polished content. That's essentially why Dragon Ball related titles are tightly centered around the fighting game genre with minimal exploration or RPG elements. But thankfully the E3 trailer for this game has somewhat made me optimistic in terms of its content. Like I cannot put into words on how blown away I am with the things I've seen. I mean obviously the game looks stunning but the amount of volume this title has sets it apart from its predecessors. Until now there's never been a game that pretty much lets you explore the world of DBZ in its entirety. We've gotten a taste of what that would be like but only in small doses. Most of the time they'd implement some of the more iconic spots like the Kami's Lookout and Kame House or West City's Capsule Corporation, but they all seemed like they were stitched close together making the world feel like one small town. In DBZ Kakarot the world actually feels grand in scale. I actually feel like I will have to travel great distances to get to some of the more iconic locations. As you can see the world actually has character and it's vast. There aren't any barriers forcing the player to strive on linear paths to complete objectives. If I can see it, chances are I can actually travel to it. And since Goku has different abilities under his belt, I can choose to fly via the Nimbus Cloud or through sheer key energy alone. I can fly through canyons or soar high above rocky plains. There's just so much that this game is going to deliver it. CyberConnect2 has undoubtedly done their homework and they've taken what they've done with the Naruto Storm series and doubled down on their craft. There's a perfect balance between the cell shaded aesthetic and the 3D environments, and I feel like I'm going to be immersed in this fully realized world. With that said, I just want to note that while this game's exploration has shown to be a high watermark for the franchise, CyberConnect2 isn't really promising that this will be a complete open world game, stating that if they were to make it like that, they'd have to lie about certain aspects that most likely won't be in the final product. They basically wanted to recreate the experience of certain arcs within Dragon Ball Z, which I totally understand, like when it comes to the action RPGs, the worlds don't always have to be fully realized. I can imagine how hard it would be remaking the world of DBZ completely from the ground up. They just need enough activity in them to make them feel somewhat fleshed out. Speaking of activities, this game seems to be going in the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild route, meaning that your survival instincts are going to be put to the test. I noticed that this world is riddled with wildlife that can essentially be used as a food source. You can attack animals like impalas and add them to your meat reserves. You'll also be tasked with cooking the fish or meat you've caught in order to boost certain stats. The better your cuisines are, the better your stats will improve. There's an awesome nod to the original Dragon Ball series where we see Goku attach a Saiyan tail to his ass to catch fish. This just shows how much CC2 is jumping into the toy chest of ideas and lore to appeal to diehard DBZ fans, as well as those who appreciate exploration. But anyways, let's talk about the interface and the way you'll be embarking on these missions. This game kinda looks like a mesh of DBZ Budokai 3's Dragon Universe and Infinite Worlds Dragon Missions modes. 
You have this map consisting of the Dragon Radar that gives you the locations through specific icons like in Budokai 3, and there are these orb loops you can fly through like in Infinite World for what I guess will be used to purchase items. Another thing I'm noticing is how the flying seems to have a free flow to it, where you can fly gracefully during barrel rolls or you can fly aggressively with bursts. If you notice when Goku does the burst, the blue bar decreases which indicates that it'll serve as a key meter. It looks like you'll occasionally need to let up on bursting to let your meter recharge your key. And this is awesome because the player can grind to increase the length of their key to perform bursts for longer durations. I'm hoping that the level cap will be significantly high so I can have a decent amount of playtime. But moving on, as you roam around you'll notice that there are NPCs scattered throughout various locations. And there are thought bubbles that let you see what they're saying. Once again, this shows the level of detail CC2 has put into this world. Among some of the NPCs, there'll be certain characters from the DB Mythos who you can interact with and undergo missions. In this one scene, you see Android 8, aka Aider, from the original Dragon Ball. And when you interact with him, he tasks you of taking down a renegade robot from the Red Ribbon Army in exchange for a reward. Something I noticed once you find the robot engaged him in combat, the gameplay will still consist of free roam. Like I didn't see this arena barrier come up at any moment and everything looked like it could still be explored and you could choose to lead the battle if you wanted to. I'm not sure if that's the case, but if the battles are locked in a certain arena, you'll still have a lot of space to play around in. If anything, it looks like some of the more story focused missions are going to be limited to certain areas. Since you see Goku and Piccolo doing battle with Raditz in this grassy plains area and it seems like cutscenes will keep you in that location. Now this battle shows just how much destruction you're going to be able to cause and like there's some serious detail that went into this game. Which doesn't surprise me because CyberConnect 2 has proven that they can make a battle look just as good if not better than it did in the anime. When energy blasts are shot in certain patterns they can result in craters and the grass is visibly singed to a burnt crisp. During some of the more intense moments when a character pulls off an ultimate attack, it goes into this in-game cinematic. For example, you see Nappa performing his volcano explosion and Goku has a certain amount of time he can get out of its range. Then the gameplay transitions to a close-up of Nappa completing the attack. I'm not sure if it's strictly like this during the story segments, but it would be awesome if it's like that during all of the game. Because it just flows so smoothly and it doesn't necessarily interrupt the flow of combat. This definitely seems like it's going to be a thing in terms of the more giant boss battles as well since you see Goku dodging attacks from 8 Vegeta. The thing that I'm a little apprehensive about is exactly how much complexity goes into the fight mechanics because CyberConnect 2 aren't really known for intuitive controls. I know it's a little unfair to question this since the game's still in development and it's leaning more on RPG elements, but when it comes to DBZ games, you sort of want those controls to harken back to the old Budokai Tenkaichi days. I think that those games really pushed what you could do with the Z Fighters, and we've seen games like Xenoverse take what the Tenkaichi series has done and fuse them with RPG aspects, but this game looks like it's going to be a more simplified version of that with more emphasis on the RPG elements. Anyways guys, I just wanted to give you my thoughts on DBZ Kakarot. I intended to have this video up sooner, but things got a little crazy at this year's E3 and I went into a Marvel's Avengers game upload frenzy. So we're finally uploading something different for a change. But I want to know what you guys think. Do you feel like the gameplay will be enough to get us through the redundant DBZ stories that we've heard over and over? And what are your overall thoughts on the open world gameplay? Let me know down in the comments below. As always, I ask that you like or dislike the video. It doesn't have to be a thumbs up, it can be a thumbs down. Any feedback is good feedback and will only help me improve on my channel. But if you really enjoyed the video, it would help me out tremendously if you shared it on social media outlets with all your friends and followers. Sharing really makes a difference. But this is your boy RBG signing out on another video. I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.